All right, here we go. Welcome back to the show. All right, so this problem, it's kind of a traditional problem. This is part two in the series of videos that we're looking at here on a rotational acceleration and torque. This is a pretty common old school problem. And what we've got are two objects and they're hung over a pulley. A mass M1, M2, M1 is bigger and so M1 is the larger, heavier object, so it's falling, and M2 is going up. So there is what we've got in terms of working this sucker out. So let's see what we can kind of do here with this guy. All right, uh, eventually we're going to come back into this because what makes this one different is the fact that we've got this uh, cylinder, and we'll say it's a solid cylinder with a mass M and radius R. All right, let's start off by doing our free body diagrams. That should be the first thing you do. Let's look at what you know how to do well. So let's go back and do some free body diagrams here. All right, so let's call this one M1, and then we'll make this other M2 over here. So for M1, Let's look at it. We're going to have a, we're going to say, little M1G going down. And now this is different. Uh, the old problems that you've probably done, there were just, these were the same tension. Because as long as this is a frictionless, massless pulley, then the tension on both sides is the same. But in this one, we're actually going to call this tension one and this other rope tension too because they're not the same in this problem so we're going to have a tension one on this object and now let's go to the other side and do it so let's look at m2 so m2 i always start with my forces of gravity first m2 g going down and we will have on it that T2. So we've already got something that makes this one different than all the times you've done this before. Now, some of the forces, I feel compelled to write some of the forces X, which is zero. And likewise, for the other one, the sum of the forces X is also zero. Some of the forces Y... Uh, this is my falling object over here. So I'm going to write M1G minus T1 is equal to MA. And then on the other one, sum of the forces Y, I'm going to write, see it's going up, so T2 minus M2G equals M2A, and I've already caught a mistake. I don't know if you have, but it's very important when working these problems that you remember like all your M1s and M2s, and I forgot an M1, which I will now correct. So M1A. So, so far, all my physics is good. So now it's time to look at the pulley in this problem. And... I've got this little box over here because, again, when you first, except for my mouse, just disappeared. And so, literally what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to lay a beam over this problem. The last time I did this, I worked it. Because, literally, that's what's going on. When you're looking at this, we need to draw a rigid body diagram. So, a rigid body diagram... In the center of this, I'm going to have an MG going down. And I'm going to say, we can call it a, I f normally I call that a normal force. I shall call that a reaction force R because it's completely irrelevant and isn't going to matter. But something has to be holding up this pulley. And then we've got, at this point... We've got a T2 down, and on the other side, we've got a force T1 pulling down. So this is why we spend that time early on 
learning how to look at these beams, because even something like this cylinder we can treat. Now, I feel compelled, even though we're not going to use it, I'm going to do a sum of the forces X and a sum of the forces Y, because these, these videos are building. So a sum of the forces X on that guy is zero, and a sum of the forces Y would be equal to R minus big MG minus T1 minus T2, and I'm going to say it's equal to zero. And so you may be wondering again, why, just like last video, why is the pulley equal to zero in both dimensions? Well, you got to remember something. Is the pulley, the center of mass of the pulley, is it changing positions up or down? And it's not. So that's why we still say that the sum of the forces on that object is still zero. Now, so what this object is doing that's interesting is it does have a rotation. So what we need to do, and let's, let's just get crazy. Let's go ahead and go with some blue ink. Because when you do this kind of stuff, things like that make you exciting. So let's do our sum of the torques here. So in terms of this object, let's look at what is actually giving. And I'm going to do something. The center is going to be my pivot point. So that means I obviously do not have a torque due to either R or MG. So they're out. So it's just T1 and T2. And they're both going to be at R. But which one to go first? They're obviously working against each other. So I'm going to write T1 R minus T2 R. And you should look at that and at least hopefully intuitively know the reason why I did it that way. And that's because the direction of rotation is with the T1. And now, here's the thing, that is equal to I alpha. And what's funny, the physics in this problem, if you heard that blowing sound, I dropped a little piece of my Pop-Tart on my screen. But anyway, the physics in this problem is really over. Because what we've got at this point here, these are the equations that we need to solve for acceleration are T1 and T2. Usually what you do is get acceleration. So let's go ahead and kind of finish it at least. Give me back my blue pen if you would kind, sir. And so we'll go and do something. T1 R minus T2 R is equal to, it's a solid cylinder, so one half M R square and then in place of alpha, if you remember from the last video, that is A over R. So if you actually take a look, R cancels square. All the R's have canceled out. And so all this torque equation resolves back to is T1 minus T2 equals one half M. Hey, so now's the time that we need to start putting this together. I'm going to do something. I'm going to go back to our other two objects. I'm going to solve those for T1 and T2. So I'm going to say that T1 is actually equal to what? M1G minus M1A. Hopefully you can follow that algebra. And then T2 for this other guy, what would that be? M2A plus M2G. And now here's the goal. I'm going to take both of these equations and I'm going to bring them over to that guy. So let's bring them all, both of these, back into our torque equation. I think I will need more room. So let's look at that. So the torque equation gave us T1. I'm just rewriting it so that it's not jammed over to the left side of the page. So let's plug in our T1. 
So T1 is M1G minus M1A. And then we've got minus T2. So let's focus and remember to distribute that negative. So that would be minus M2A and minus M2G all equal to one half big M. A, let's get everything with A on one side, the G's on the other. So let's kind of separate this. M1G minus M2G equals the other side. We'd have what? M1A plus M2A plus one half MA. And you really should not need to finish this video, but if you feel compelled, I will go ahead and solve it for A. I'm going to factor the G out of the left side, M1 minus M2. I'm going to go ahead and divide, factor this out, and I'm going to go ahead and divide. So we'd end up dividing by M1 plus M2 plus one half M equals A. And so there would be my final. And now here's the thing. I always tell you on these problems. It's just like, I don't know if you watched any of my other videos on like doing connected objects with ropes and strings, but they always ended up with like M1 plus M2A in the end. They always end up with that. If you had three, if you had five objects, <coughs> it would literally, if your algebra was done right, well, you get the idea. It would be all five objects. In that case, four, because I ran out of room added together. So this kind of lets me know when I see that M1 plus M2 plus one half M, it lets me know I did this problem right. So anyway, so that's how you do this problem. Now, I did say at the beginning of the video, what would be the only difference you would do? What if there's like a frictional torque in this? The frictional torque would be resisting the motion. So if it did have like a frictional torque in there as well, when you wrote out your uh, torque equation, T1R minus T2R, you would also write a minus whatever your torque is for your friction. So you would just have that extra component into this first torque side. So anyway, that's it, and have a pleasant day. We'll catch you later on the Turnford Show. <laughs>